I don't know if you guys heard, but I had some cut-ups ready to go and everything ready to go for this. And then uh, some internet problems, they, they kind of disappeared on me. So we're going to go old school. Um, we got a whiteboard, we got a pen, uh, we'll, we'll be just fine. But um, I'll reiterate this at the end, but if uh, there's anything that you're interested in, you know, hearing more about or trying to see on film, um, if I can get something to you after the fact, I will. Um, going to talk about our kickoff scheme uh, to start, and we'll go through that. And then um, kind of towards the end, talk about kind of how we practice it. Um, I like our approach um, to, to practicing it and kind of breaking it down. So we'll touch on that and put, put up on the board some of the things that we do um, circuit-wise and stuff like that. But uh, before I start with our scheme, I kind of got to give a little history of how it's evolved. Um, I got to know to 2008 and was promoted to special teams coordinator uh, for 2009 and have been in that role ever since. Um, we actually led the nation two years in a row um, in our kickoff, uh, kick return yardage defense. So the simple term for that is we covered kicks really well. Back-to-back um, -back years, nine and 10, we did that. Um, and then they made some rule changes that forced us to kind of adapt our scheme. Um, and when we get over the board here in just a second, I'll kind of show you what we were doing and then how we, how we adapted um, to the rule changes uh, and still, you know, we're able to perform at a pretty high level um, on this unit. All right. So I'm just going to swing this over here. Hopefully we can see the, the, uh, the board. Okay. We'll get as close as possible. Making do with what we got given the uh, technological failures of the day. All right. All right. So, Initially in the 2009 and 10 seasons, okay, the way we would start this out is we had two players designated on the unit. We called them cadets, um, and they weren't included in our number scheme, all right? Their rule was when you didn't have the restriction of the five yards, prior to the kick, okay, they were floaters. So we didn't want the return team to be able to get a, a uh, count on them of where they were going to be, whether it was number one, two, so on and so forth. So they were told where to insert at the kick, but prior to, they would be moving. Uh, they would be in motion, moving all around. Um, and then at the kick, they would insert, whether they were in the four spot, the six spot, whatever it may be. Um, and they were our, our ball guys. They had no uh, rules. You know, they were straight, most direct path to the ball. Um, and it was, a, it was a nice thing for us because it made it real tough on the return team to get a count of who they were and it kind of messed with blocking assignments. When the rule change came, okay, we eliminated that position that we called cadets, which happens to be our mascot. Um, so we went just to just numbers, um, kept everybody numbered. Now I'm a defensive guy at heart, so pretty much everything I draw is looking at it this way. Um, and that's how I count it out. So um, from the return teams, left to right is how we number it, one through 10. Um, okay, and we will kick, a variety of ways. Now, this scheme is predicated on your kicker being comfortable kicking to his right, kicking to his left um, from different placements on the field. Okay. I've been really fortunate at Norwich that for quite a while now I've had kickers that have felt good doing that. Um, that's might not be the situation you're in um, and you can adapt it as necessary. But when I give the, this unit a call, all right. Um, I, I will give them the first part of the call will be right, middle, or left, okay? And if it's right from the kicking team's right, we kick from the right hash. If it's middle, we kick from the middle. If it's left, we kick from the left hash, all right? Now, that doesn't have anything to do with where the kick is going. I'm a big believer in directional kicking. Um, you know, we want to we dictate where that ball is going to go and try to take away part of the field, okay? So first call right now, I started it from middle, okay? So this would be a middle call initially, all right? The next things in the call will be numbers, okay? And they can be a sample call would be 46 to start, all right? So what that tells us is the number four player and the number six player are those ball guys, okay? They're not given any other responsibility in the coverage other than take the most direct route to the ball, go make the tackle. In a perfect world, Right, they're going to make every tackle. Um, they're going to be unblocked. Rarely on the football field do things go perfectly for us. Right? Okay, but that's the idea behind it. Okay, 
So the start of this call would be middle, 46, and then I'll give them another direction, right or left, okay? I do not like to kick the ball down the middle of the field. Um, so I'm never going to tell the kicker to do that. And nothing will get my blood pressure to rise faster than when the kick goes in the middle of the field, <laughs> when it's supposed to be to the right or to the left. Okay, so say middle, okay, 46, right. So what that tells us is we're putting the ball in the middle. It's teed up there. Okay, the four player and the six player are our ball guys, you know, gunners, whatever you want to call them, but they are direct to the ball. They don't have any landmarks, nothing like that. They're going straight to the ball, all right? And then right tells us where we're kicking it, okay? So we're going to kick it to our right as the kicking team, okay? I like to try to put the ball as close to the sideline as possible, all right? Somewhere between the numbers and the sideline. Again, to really try to take away part of the field that you have to cover, okay? So we're, we're looking to kick to the right. We're trying to pin it in there, all right? Something of note, there's always a player away from the kick side, and, and we'll talk through this, but there's always a player away from the kick side we call him the stopper. And what his job is, is the ball stops at him, okay? And the guy that's gonna be is the third player in from the sideline opposite the kick side, okay? So if we send four and six to the ball, that means the eight player is the stopper. So what this guy's rule is, is he's gonna squeeze to the kick, okay? And he's gonna get his inside foot up, and he is going to stop it at the goal post, take away half the field. The ball absolutely positively cannot cross his face. That's his rule. All right. So now if in some situation, if, if eight was a ball guy, okay, then seven would be our stopper. It's going to be that third player who's not involved, okay, away from the kick side. All right. That's a key position on this unit. Now, listen, a lot of times that guy doesn't make a ton of tackles, but he makes plays because he's going to force that ball to where the coverage is going, all right? Again, you got to have a kicker that's going to kick the ball at least pretty consistently where you want it to go, okay? I'm making coverage called based on where I want the ball kicked, okay? So if I'm going to send certain guys, if I got a kicker here, okay, a few years back I had a kid who signed with the Jacksonville Jaguars. He was pretty trustworthy, okay, in that I could tell him where I wanted it kicked, and it was going there, all right? So – with a guy like him, I could really overload, okay? I could be borderline unsound, and I'm admitting that freely, okay? But I knew he was going to kick it where I wanted it, and I could really compensate for that, okay? As we evolved, we've still had some pretty good kickers. We've been really fortunate, okay? But you, you also want to make sure that you're not putting yourself in a bad spot. If I overcompensate, send everybody to the right, and the kick goes to the left hash, okay, we're in, we're in big trouble, all right? So another sample call here as we go through it, okay? We could be 47. The four and the seven would be the ball guys, so on and so forth. We'll get through that a little bit as we go. Okay, so let's stay with that initial call, the four and the six. So just for this purposes, okay, I'm just going to cross them out. They don't count. Okay, we're not worried about them. They're hopefully going straight to the ball. They're making the play. All right, I'm going to adjust this so you guys can see the whole board here. Okay, so ideally we want the ball kicked. Here's the numbers, the sidelines over here. We want the ball kicked in this area. Okay, away from in between the numbers and the sidelines. Okay. If four is involved as a ball guy, all right, and six is a ball guy, okay, we're kicking to the right. What I'm telling the three and the five, the two guys to the kick side on opposite side of the ball guy. Okay. And I haven't come up with a clever term since I stopped using cadet. So that we just call them ball guys. All right. I'm telling the two players on either side of the ball guy to the kick side, they are our vice players, okay? Their job is to vice the football. So if four is a ball guy, that means three and five are the vice players initially. So what we're looking for is three and five, ideally the way they fit, they fit on the ball carrier. Each of them, they, in a perfect world, they're shoulder to shoulder with each of them having their inside shoulder on the ball carrier, squaring it up, okay? So if, let's say that happens for us to take it through. So three, and five are our vice guys, okay? The next guy's involved here, this two, okay? He's gonna fit off of three, all right? And we call it a hip fit. You guys have probably seen it. So his job is to fit off number three on his hip, and his job is if the ball goes outside to make the tackle, if it punctures three and five, 
he's a fold. So we say fit to fold. So you fit on the hip, your shoulders are square, your feet are live. If it punctures, you fold, okay? If it bounces, you tackle. One is our contain guy, okay? And we'll talk about their technique a little bit in a minute, okay? And on the opposite side, it's 10, all right? Our widest guys are our contain guy, okay? So three and five are vice, two is a fit to fold, okay? Six is involved in this call as a ball guy, so seven's got to squeeze, okay? The number one thing that I'm yelling at practice when we work on kickoff is squeeze, 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 okay? I'm constantly on squeeze. You got to find guys that are athletic enough, okay, to squeeze to the football and keep their shoulders square, all right? It can be done. You've got great distance to cover, okay? You don't have to turn your hips and take a banana route. That is not what we're looking for. We want our shoulders square and we're squeezing, taking the space out of it, okay? You've got a pretty big gap between the five and the seven now for this guy to squeeze. Never as big as it looks on a whiteboard, okay, but still pretty good. So this guy's got to start squeezing right away, seven. His rule is he's going to fit to fold on the hip of five, okay? Same thing as, as the number two player over here. He's trying to fit off that back hip, okay? And I'll, after we get through this, I'll, I'll diagram kind of what I'm talking about, okay? But he's trying to fit to fold off the back hip of number five. If it crosses five's face, all right, he's now the contain. It can't get outside of him, okay? But if it punctures, he's folding. Eight is fit to fold off seven. Nine, same thing. And then 10 is our contain guy. What I tell one in 10 as the contain guys is, I never like to use the word slow down, throttle down. Um, that's what I want them to do, but I don't like to use that word. So I tell them when they get to about 25 yards from the ball, to skate. That's just the term I use. It basically means throttle down a little bit, okay, get ready to fold, turn and run if you have to. Okay, they're your touchdown savers, right? If they're making, if they're making the tackle anyway, the coverage is already, already blown, okay? So that's not an ideal world anyway, okay? So I use that term skate because I don't like to say – I just don't like to say slow down. I don't like to say break down. I say throttle down, skate, whatever, okay, whatever term you feel comfortable using, all right? Now – I just took you through the perfect scenario, okay? As we said earlier, it's never perfect on the football field, okay? So four is a ball guy, all right? So three and five of our advice guys, all right? What we're telling these other guys is the first guy down, if, you beat, if two beats three, two becomes a vice guy, okay? So if two gets down the field ahead of three, all right, he's now going to be a vice with five. So he's going to put his inside pad on the ball carrier. Five's gonna put his inside pad on the ball carrier. Okay, and they're gonna try to squeeze that. And now three just becomes a fit to fold guy. Okay, he's just gotta fit off the guy in front of him. All right, this becomes nothing more than a pursuit drill when you, when you really break it down, okay? We tell the first guy there, you two are the first guys there, you're the vice, okay? If somebody beats you there, all right, you're now a fit to fold, okay? I, a lot of people, okay, are really big on landmarks and, and you know you, you are running down the field at this you stay in your lane you do it there's a lot of merit to that okay I want these guys to be as aggressive as possible so I'm not over coaching that part of it okay we generally by their alignment have them in a lane to begin with and then it's all based on squeezing okay squeeze to the ball squeeze to the ball squeeze to the ball again if your shoulders are square you can change direction pretty easily, all right? So we're not overcoaching, other than the stopper, we're not overcoaching that landmark part of it, all right? And believe me, I had to sell my head coach on this. We had to have a couple of years of success, okay, before he uh, fully bought in with it, okay? So everybody on the field could potentially become a vice player, okay? We always draw up this, and then we're always telling guys, you got to fit up your teammates, you got to fit up your teammates, okay? Don't follow color so on and so forth, just like you would in a pursuit drill, right? Once the ball's kicked, okay, this just becomes a defensive play in my mind, okay? It's just, we're basically looking at run fits, all right? So that's how we go, all right? We might go with, um, we might go with 57, okay? is another one I like. You get the five now as a ball guy, the seven is a ball guy, okay? So all the rules just change. The stopper remains the same, okay? If the five and the seven are going, now you've basically got, Four and six are your vice players if you kick it to the right, okay? If it was 57 left, okay, now you've got 
six and eight are your are your vice players over here, and the number three player would be your stopper. So it's always going to be that third player from the sideline away from the kick side. The goal with that is that stopper player, as he gets down to the goalpost here, right, he positions himself right on the center. So we're t trying to say we don't have to defend this part of the field, okay? We want the ball to stay on this side of the field. It gets to you, you stop it. It does not go beyond you. And a lot of times, like I said, that player won't make the tackle, but as they, they try to bring it across, he stops it. He's got his inside foot up. And I, I, when I demonstrate it, I slam like I'm taking a you know, post step as an offensive lineman. And I say, this foot's in the ground, guys, and the ball can't cross it. So a lot of times he'll get to that stopper, and then he'll end up having to cut back, hopefully, and then you get the guys coming from the backside and make the tackle. Okay, make a lot of plays for us. All right, so that becomes a really critical role. Okay, and listen. Because to pay, based on the call, all right, it could be multiple players who are the stopper, okay? We spend a lot of time just going through it in meetings over and over and over, okay? We got the special teams meeting. I'll just say, all right, here's the call. You know, it's right uh, 38, which is a curveball for them, okay? Right, 38, right. Who's the stopper? And they'll tell me, seven, good, because eight's gone, all right? So on and so forth. So you just got to spend a lot of time getting them to know. You know, if you're the third guy in away from the kick side, you are the stopper. The ball stops with you, can't cross your face. Okay, and that's, again, that's the rule for all these guys. I tell them, whoever you are, okay, when you're coming down, you're squeezing the ball, it's on your inside pad, can't cross your face. Okay, it crosses his face, you're the next guy out, ball's on your inside pad, can't cross your face, so on and so forth. Okay, that's how we, that's how we do it. And again, depending on the call, we'll kick from right, left, or middle. And where we kick, does, where we're placed in the ball to kick it from does not tell us, okay, where we're actually kicking it. All right, we don't want to be that predictable. Okay, now, again, if, uh, if you're ever at a Norwich game and, and you hear me call a kick down the middle, then call 911 because I don't like to do that and something's wrong with me. Okay, um, so that part of it. Now, I'm going to erase this part here, and I want to kind of show you what we're looking for in terms of the fit here, okay? When I talk about that fit to fold, show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so if we have the returner here, okay, and I'm just gonna use X's because we already talked about the numbers could change, okay? So there's our two vice guys. Again, when I'm drawing this stuff, I'm taking the, the ball guys out of the equation. They are unaccounted for. Hopefully they're screaming down the field like banshees and making the play, all right? So our two vice guys are here. The next player down, okay, on this side, He's that fit to fold, okay? Call it the flying V if you want, mighty ducks, whatever you want to call it, okay? Next player here, all right? Next player is here, 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 okay? So what we're looking for is vice, vice, it can't puncture, all right? So let's say we did a great job, it can't puncture. So this returner goes here. Now this guy is the stop guy, can't cross your face. These two players become the vice players, all right? Crosses his face, which it can't do, but sometimes it does, okay? Now he's going to squeeze. These two players become the vice players, all right? The other scenario that's not good for us, if the ball punctures, okay, the vice players don't squeeze, they get bumped off, whatever it may be, all right? The ball punctures, we're looking to fold, okay? That's why we say fit off the hip to fold, fit to fold. Punctures there, fit to fold, fit to fold. So we're looking for that. You're either going to be a stopper or a folder if you're not a vice player. All right. So the first two guys to the ball carry are the vice players. By the call, they know who it should be, but you got to be able to adjust on the fly. You got to be able to, to fit off of your teammates. Okay. The zones that we kind of talk about with our guys. All right. You're going to hear me say square to the guys a lot. You're going to hear me say squeeze more than anything. I'm always yelling squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. We got to take the air out of that. Okay, we got to squeeze the air out of it and get it condensed down, okay? We're always trying to avoid initially, okay? The, the, when we get to the um, drill portion of this and how we drill it, okay, we'll talk about it too, but um, the goal for this unit is, okay, everybody's getting off at the same time, okay, and everybody's as close to full speed as they can be at the line where the ball's kicked, okay? That's number one, okay? We're always going to avoid the first level blockers, okay? Now, here's something I learned. Maybe this will help somebody because it took me a while, okay? 
I would always get up there and say to the coverage unit, okay, you're going to avoid butt side. You're going to avoid butt side. And what I meant by that, right, was if I show you my face mask and numbers, okay, I'm trying to block you that way. So you guys, I'm sure, have all drilled it. You've all talked about it. He shows you those face mask and numbers. you got to rip across his face and get tight off his rear end and get stacked and get back to squeezing, okay? I had a player, and uh, he's, he's now a, a high-ranking Army officer, so he's definitely a smart kid. But he was um, always going the opposite way in practice, always. And I kept saying to him, avoid butt side, avoid butt side. He'd say, yes, coach. And we'd run a rep, and he'd go the face side. And finally, I, I said to him, I said, what are, you, what are you doing, man? You keep telling me, avoid butt side. Yes, coach. And he said, coach, I am avoiding his butt side. And I went, ah, okay, I got to be a little more clear in my, uh, my description of this. He thought I was telling him to avoid the rear end, not avoid to that side. So, again, I've uh, changed my verbiage a little bit, my nomenclature, so that he, uh, players understand exactly what we're asking. But, you know, that's part of coaching, right, is you, you learn – how they're interpreting what you're saying, if there's a better way to say it. So that was a little piece of that for the avoid part, okay? Once they get past those first level blockers, all right, I use the term collision compress, okay? So at that point, I don't want them really focusing on avoiding anymore because that opens up seams. Now we're going to attack those blocks, okay? We're going to collision, we're going to compress. What that means is I'm going to collision you as a blocker, I'm going to get extension with my arms, but I'm going to continue to try to compress down the field and take the space away, right? So if you're a blocker, the returner's back here, we're engaged, I'm a cover guy, we're engaged. I'm gonna try to, while I'm engaged with you, okay, I'm gonna continue to try to compress towards the ball carry and take the air out of it, okay? Limit that area down, all right? With extension so that I can escape. If you don't get extension, whether you're a kick coverage guy, a tackler, it doesn't matter, okay? If you don't have extension, you can't escape. So these guys are gonna collision, compress, and I want them to extend so that they're able to escape. So they're going to try to get that lockout, all right? As they compress towards the ball carrier, they cannot pick a side at that point, right? We tell them you can't pick a side. We're going to try to butt it up. We're going to be square, okay? Ideally, shading to the inside shoulder, but we need to stay square to it, okay? And as we compress, that ball carrier goes one way or the other. We're going to escape that way. That's why we have to extend, okay? So we say full speed, avoid stack, all right? Collision, compress, escape, okay? So that's what we're talking about in terms of the coverage zones of what we're looking for as we go down the field, all right? A um, couple other things that we use here, we also will use tags, okay? So we can put pop, okay? And we can put drill, okay? And we can use squib, okay? Now, what these tags mean is the call would be the same. Okay, so we could say right, 46, right, pop. And what that tells the kicker is, I want the ball to go high. I could care less about the distance, okay? But I want it high, I want it up in the air. We're generally looking at the like 25, 27 yard line area, okay? Give us time to run under it. Okay, a couple things are gonna happen, hopefully. All right, one is you force a fair catch, no return, okay? Two is, You've, we've got time to cover it, okay? So even if the guy does try to return it, he's going to have a defender in his face immediately, all right? And the third thing is, and we've had a lot of luck recovering these type of kicks. The third thing is a guy who's not used to always catching kicks is trying to field one now. Okay, I remember when I was in college, um, I was a, an F back there, a second line guy, and uh, they kicked the ball high to me, and my coaches had said, fair catch it, fair catch it, fair catch it. Well, you're still dealing with 18 to 22-year-olds, and sometimes the, uh, the brain, you know, goes blank and they're trying to catch that thing and they're not used to handling it. So you get a chance to steal a possession that way. All right. So um, we like to use pop. Okay. And I'm super guilty of we kick the ball down to the goal line. Okay. And we give up a, a 20 yard return and the other team starting at the 20 and I'm upset because we gave up a 20 yard return. Now, if we kick that ball into the end zone and not had to cover it, I'd be thrilled. So I, I really have to be <laughs> aware of what um, I'm looking at in terms of starting field position. So I'm saying with that pop, if they catch the ball at the 25-yard line, they fair catch it, zero return yards. It's the same as a touchback, all right? It's an effective tool for us, 
Okay, it's an effective tool. And again, you, you also have the added bonus of potentially recovering it. And I'm telling those coverage guys, when we call pop, expect the ball to be on the ground. Okay, so we've been lucky over the years. We've gotten a number of uh, recoveries on that type of kick. Okay, the next one is drill. Okay, again, we could say, we'll mix it up. I'm right-handed, so I say right a lot. We'll say, okay, left, 57 left. All right, drill. That tag drill tells that kicker that, that quote unquote guard player in the front line. All right, we want to kick the ball directly at his chest if we can. Okay. Again, a couple things happen. He may drop it, it may bounce right off of him and we steal a possession. Okay. Or, um, you know, he may just jump out of the way and it just turns into a squib kick and, and that's okay too. But it's a nice chance to uh, put some pressure on guys that aren't um, used to handling the football and occasionally will panic when it's coming right at them. Um, in, a, in the best possible scenario, and I see this a lot with this type of kick, is it comes out as a knuckleball. Um, and it's really tough for kids to, to gauge exactly what it's going to do. Um, and it's a nice way to, to kind of steal almost like an onside kick without calling it. All right. And then the last tag is squib. Okay. And I think everybody knows what we're doing there is we're just going to squib kick it. Um, we're going to get it, you know, down low on the ground, rolling around and uh, try to limit, you know, anything the return team can do. Okay. Um, so that's kind of the overview of our, our kickoff coverage. Uh, before we get into the drills, I do want to really quickly um, talk to you guys about our onside kick. Uh, I think I get no credit for this. I stole it years and years ago, uh, but I think it's pretty neat and it's been a nice thing for us. Um, and it really puts some stress on the receiving team. Um, so the way we align our onside kick is, is not traditional. Okay, so we put it in the middle, all right? We take our, uh, our five player and our six player, and they stay in there with the kicker, okay? Then we take the remaining four on either side, and we put them all out wide. So after the ref blows his whistle, all right, they're going to go out outside the numbers, okay? And they're going to be out wide. Regardless of where we're kicking, okay, this is how we're going to align when we onside kick, all right? Again, a lot of it comes down to this kid. Is he comfortable kicking the ball to his right, to his left, so on and so forth. But what we're trying to accomplish and what we've been able to accomplish over the years is the return team doesn't know where that's going, right? You put your hands team out there, okay? You're going to try that, you know, they put the ball on this hash, they put everybody over here, you know, it's coming this way. So you're going to overload your hands team this way, vice versa, balls on this hash, they've overloaded, you, you slide your team that way. What we feel like with this is, regardless of how the return team lines up to it, we're going to have an advantage in the numbers game, okay? So when you get this alignment, you put your hands team out there, you know, how are you going to lie to it? You can, you can try to guess, and then you're going to be wrong, okay, no matter what you do. So we have three options, right? And it changes week to week, unless any, in case anybody's trying to uh, scout me. <laughs> um, we, we line up like this. And then maybe this week's game, I'll either say one, two, or three from the sideline. Okay, one is right, two is middle, three is left. All right, so we're going to align. When the kids go out there to line up for this onside kick, they don't know which way the kick's going. Okay, we're going to let them know from the sideline. It might be a hand signal, might be colors that week, green, red, yellow. It doesn't matter. We change it up every week. But they're going to line up, they're going to look over, and then we're going to tell them which way it's going based on how the return team is lined up, the hands team. So we feel like it gives us a great advantage over how the hands team is going to line up. Either we're going to have a numerical advantage where we have an extra player on them, okay, or they're going to call timeout and then try to adjust. Well, then we could just switch where we're going to kick it. So um, we've, we've liked it a lot. It's been a nice thing for us. Um, you know, we'll go, we'll go to the right, we'll go to the left. If we go middle, we're just going with that little dribbler. We're telling these two players to basically run interference. The kicker is going to kick and follow. Um, one year, what I did was, if any of you guys have this, um, we lined up like this about nine years ago, and uh, I had three kickers, and I put three kickers out there. So depending on where the, uh, where the kick was going, okay, if it was going to our right, this guy kicked it. If it was going to our left, this guy kicked it. Okay, and if it was going to the middle, this guy kicked it. So that was kind of cool, uh, something that we, uh, we did. And we recovered that, that one that we did it that year. So. Um, a pretty neat deal. But again, I think it's really, really cool because you have 
a uh, numbers advantage no matter which way the hand seam does it. If they're going to put, you know, if they put four here and four here, okay, they've only got three players left. So you feel like you've got at least an even chance to recover it. Most teams are going to have somebody back deep in the event that you kick it deep. So, you know, if they go four, four, two with a returner back deep, okay, now you've got three on two here. All right. If they're going to try to adjust, you know, you, you really can get yourself an extra player. If we kick to the right or the left, the five or the six, depending on um, which way we kick it, the guy opposite that, he's going to insert himself into the coverage post kick. So if we kick to the left here, okay, these, these four players are involved immediately. Six is on a, on a 45, okay, into the coverage. And then five, after the kick is kicked, he's kind of a late addition as well if that ball is out there bouncing around. Um, so this was stolen directly off a, uh, a football game I was watching in a hotel room years and years ago on a recruiting trip, and uh, we really liked it. We really liked it a lot. Okay, so that's the schematic stuff. Now, in terms of drills and how we practice this stuff, okay, I'm a big believer in, in the special teams game. Hey, can right? I ask you a quick question before you yes. go on? Absolutely. Uh, what do you have for rules for those guys out wide, your, your one through four and your seven through nine? They, who's blocking? Who's going to the ball? Who's or not blocking, but who's blowing people up? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I generally tell the two interior players that they're – they're blocking, blowing people, whatever you want to, whatever term you ever want to use. Um, so, like, if we were going to the right, it would be the two and the three, okay, and then we're sending the one and the four, um, you know, as the, the quote-unquote recovery type guys, and vice versa. If we were going to the left, it would be the eight and the nine, would be the, the attack guys, the blow people up guys, um, you know, whatever you, want to, whatever you want to call them. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. No, you're welcome. Welcome. Uh, one other thing, you just spurred my memory here. One other thing to talk about just because we just mentioned it, okay? So staying with the outside kick for a minute, all right? So if we're kicking the left, I'm just – here's our four guys over here, okay? So we're going to – our rules on the back side, okay, because we these guys don't get to play off, right? So the rules on the back side would be we're kicking this way on the onside, okay? I tell him – all right, 45 degrees, 10 yards, where, basically where the ball's being kicked, okay? The second guy in, the three, he's at a 45 at five yards, okay? Two is flat down the line in case, you know, the onside kick is scooped and run. And then one is the touchdown saver. He's taking that deeper angle, okay? And then if we flipped it over the other way, it'd be the same thing. So the closest guy is inserting himself late into the coverage at a 45, 10 yards, five yards, flat, Touchdown saver. So thank you for your question because it reminded me to go over that. All right. So again, so I'm a, all right. So I'm a big believer um, in the special teams game of breaking it down to whether it's individual work, like you would have positionally, as I destroy my daughter's whiteboard, um, breaking it down individually like you would with your position groups, um, small group stuff, whatever it may be, and then, you know, eventually putting it together with a full unit. One of the things I really liked, uh, especially, you know, in years past, um, is circuit type stuff, okay? So when we would do our kickoff circuits, all right, primarily during preseason camp, okay, but we would have three different um, stations, for lack of a better term, okay? So the number one, would be the get offs. Okay. So the kicker would go to that station. Okay. We'd have a coach or two running each station, depending on your staffing situation. All right. Kickers are involved here. Okay. And all that is as simple as it sounds. We take us basically a half line. We take five guys. Okay. We get them lined up. The kicker's there, no ball. Okay. And he's going through his approach so that the players get a feel for the timing of him so that we can hit that line full speed. Okay, that would be station one. Station two, okay, this is a drill that probably everybody's done. We would do that avoid stack, okay? And again, I did have some nice film of this, um, which hopefully I can get to people later if they're interested in seeing it. Um, but, you know, everybody's probably done it. You get a line of a couple guys, player runs down, and then you have a player give him a direction. He'll just turn one way or the other. 
These guys are working on avoiding to that rear end side, ripping across, getting back on stack, and then, you know, the next player would turn, so on and so forth. Okay, we'd go through that, get them two or three reps at it, okay, as they went down, put them right on the yard line, put players out there, blockers, okay, with or without hand shields. Um, I kind of like to use shields when I can so that we can really focus on being tight to it and not risk a stupid injury because somebody runs into somebody. Um, but get those shields out there so that we can dip and rip tight if we go the wrong way. In a perfect world, right, they're going to be on the rear end side there. We shouldn't be anywhere near the shield, but it doesn't always happen that way. So um, always trying to protect yourself from, from an injury that doesn't need to happen. All right. And then the third station is, you know, that collision, compress, okay, escape, and then fit up, okay. So we put a uh, blocker here. All right, a returner here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and uh, we have a coverage guy come down. He attacks this. This one definitely has hand shields. Um, he attacks it. He extends. He compresses the air out of it. And then the returner gives him one way or the other. He escapes the block to that side. And then it's just a fit off the back hip tackle. It's non-contact on the returner. Okay. But um, just working on that part of it. And we would rotate the players through. So everyone that we felt like was going to be involved potentially in covering kicks. Um, this is why we like to do it in preseason camp. You get a chance to evaluate everybody. Um, but everybody who might be involved in covering kicks is going to rotate through that. Okay, and we do that a couple times a week. Um, so we'll go through all three stations of getting off, the avoid stack drill, and then the collision compress escape with a fit tackle. All right. Like to do that. Do that with a lot of our special teams unit circuit work, rotate them through, okay, whether it's five, six minutes per station. Gets the kids a lot of reps at a, at a very special part, you know, specific part of the, the uh, unit so they can work on the technique there. Okay. What I did this year, I learned a, a new drill that kind of incorporated the whole thing, which I liked. Um, so what we did was this was the sideline. Okay. And then we have our yard lines here. Okay. I'm not an artist by any stretch. All right. So we have a, uh, a player here as a coverage guy. We'll use C's for that. All right. And then we had a blocker here, a blocker here. We put an agile bag perpendicular to the yard line on the bottom. And then we put a returner, okay, behind each bag. So as this player would go, and we did six groups of this with, with a coach or two monitoring each line. So we got a ton and ton of reps at it, which was awesome. Um, so this player covers. The first blocker gives him a direction, flips his hips. He avoids to the rear end side, gets back on his line. The next player would do the same thing. Okay, he gets back on his line. So he's avoiding to the butt side, ripping tight, stacking running down the line. And then when he gets to the, the uh, flat agile bag here, he's chopping his feet. Tell the returner, once he gets to the bag and chops his feet, he breaks left or right. And then we come off that simulator rip. Okay, we come off it and we get a back, back hip fit on this returner. And then we just rotate it through. So this coverage player becomes the returner and that way you get quick reps at it. And again, with six groups going across the, the field, we were able to get a lot of reps. And what I liked about this drill was it took that circuit part of it, it cut out the rotation, okay, and it allowed us to work on basically the same skills in one drill, all right? Now, we, we did both throughout the season, okay? Something that I, a couple of years ago I started was, um, you know, early on in preseason, we do a lot of the small group work and special teams, a lot of the indie work and special teams. And then once the season got rolling, you know, we'd start always doing full unit stuff. Um, and when you do that, just like anything else, right, just like offensive or defensive positions, your technique can start to erode a little bit. So we were really good this past year. And, and I'm really fortunate I work for a head coach that we spend a ton of time on special teams. Um, and he gives me the freedom to do that, which is awesome. But um, we go back to this week three, you know, week six, maybe even week nine. Um, whether it was the drill or the circuit or whatever it may be, um, so that we were constantly kind of reinforcing the, the technique part of it um, and working at that. But I, I like, you know, going from this, and then I like to evolve, you know, through it is to, in a perfect world, you take, for all your special teams, right, you take individual technique work, then you move into to 
small group stuff, whether it's half line, whether it's, you know, whatever it may be. And then you go into full unit, just like you would, you know, as your offensive defensive install goes. Um, so um, this has allowed us to get a ton of reps at the technique, evaluate everybody who can do it, who can't and get them on film. Um, and it's been really, really good to us. So um, that's, that's kind of the, the drill work that we use for that. And it saved us a lot of time. All right. Does anybody have any questions, anything that I need to go into further? Um, you know, tried to fit a lot into the time here. Anything we, we need more explanation on? No? Anybody out there have any questions for Coach? Anyone, anyone? It's like one of my position group meetings. <laughs> um, I know somebody asked us, we were on a special teams one the other day. I can't remember who was doing it, but, um, you know, I know obviously it's a different world between high school and college, but do you guys use a lot of starters on your special teams or no? Uh, we do. We do. Um, you know, I think there's a delicate balance, right, between, you know, I go to the uh, – AFCA convention every year and, and, you know, these FBS guys stand up there and they're like, our best players are going to play special teams. And I totally agree. It's too important not to, that being said, I don't have another scholarship kid. So, <laughs> um, right. you know, at the division three level, we've got some really good players, um, but the guys behind them, you know, may not be the same caliber of player. And the difference between a one and a three is huge. Right. Um, so we're going to use our best kids my rule, generally speaking, has been if you're a starter offensively or defensively, um, you're going to be a starter on a maximum of two special teams units, right? Now, those kids are going to be in the depth for sure. Um, but, um, you know, I'm going to ask them to say you're going to start on, you know, kickoff and, and punt, let's say. And, you know, you might be a backup on kick return, a backup on uh, punt block or whatever. Um, but that's been the rule. Um, now we have some kids, everybody does. I'm sure that they might be a starter, but they really, really love special teams. Right. So, um, I'll break that rule. You know, if there's a kid that says, coach, I can do it. And he's, he's not getting gassed and, um, you know, they want to be out there for all four of them. You know, I'll certainly do that as long as that coach lets me. Um, right. We also uh, seem to have the opposite of that sometimes too. Some yeah, absolutely. That they're just, you know, their effort on special teams isn't what it should be. We're right. Trying to, you know, fit a square peg into a round hole. Right. And, uh, and, you know, something that I always try to say, and I think this applies to not just special teams, but it really applies to everything is, you know, you talk about a square peg and a round hole. And, and if a kid might even be really good at it, but if he doesn't want to do it, you know, then you, you just, you're, you're hurting yourself. You're not going to get much out of them. Um, and you're really doing a disservice to, to your team, you know, um, but something that we talk about, you know, we had a, a kid this past year um, graduating, unfortunately, four-year starter for us at corner, um, four-time all-conference player, very, very good player. Um, and he did not like special teams. Uh, <laughs> um, I kind of this year got him to uh, go along with on our, our punt return. punt. We call it punt block, whether it's return or block. We just want to have that mentality. But on our punt block unit, um, he played corner. And, and – we ended up having a second team all conference returner who had a great year returning punts. Um, and when you went back and looked at it and I didn't do it on purpose, but you went back and looked at it. Um, his, most of his return yardage, his big plays um, came to the side that our, our corner was playing because guys couldn't cover punts on Like they just couldn't get off the line. He was so good at jamming those gunners. Um, so when he started to have success, I guess what I'm getting at is, when he started to have some success and started to see the fruits of his labor, um, you know, he bought into it, you know, and uh, he did a really good job for us. And he, he missed a half a game with, uh, with an injury and, and there was a discernible difference in our return yardage with him not there. Um, so, you know, your best players are your best players because they're your best athletes. And um, whenever possible, we try to involve those kids. Um, but we try also not to, to max them out too much. You know, there's only so many times banging your head against the wall. You know, we had another kid who was another a four-year starter for us. Um, and every week he was on kickoff because he was outstanding at the technique. He understood it. He knew he just was, had a knack for it. Um, and every 
week, the second or third kickoff, he's, he was begging off. So finally I just gave up. I was like, all right, you know, I could, I could get all worked up and scream and holler, but it, it's just not going to help us. So, all right, you're off Mike, you know, <laughs> coach Twitch, you got a question? Yeah. Um, based on your, your drill kick, um, do you determine where you're going to kick it based on what you see on film? If you see a weak spot or, or how do you go about doing that? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, you know, the, the easiest, the number one dead giveaway, right? The first, and this goes for the drill and the pop is, um, and this is probably stereotyping, but it goes Jersey number, right? right? So <laughs> all of a sudden when I see number 76 out there or something like that, um, you know, we, we might kick the ball to that kid, right? Either at, at him or to him. Um, and then a lot of teams, return teams, um, you know, will slide away from where they want their return to go. You know, they might have a kid on the hash and nobody outside of them. Um, we see that on film, like we're going to, we're going to try to pop right over there and, um, and the drill, like you said, alignment, um, who they are, you know, if, if teams are using like offensive or defensive linemen in the front line, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make that kid try to field the football. Um, right. cause odds are he's, he's not going to have a lot of success with it. Um, and, uh, we'll look at that, but alignment plays a major role in it too. Um, Again, I said our head coach, he's, he's an old special teams coordinator himself. So, you know, it's early in the week. I usually get him coming into my office. He's like, hey, did you see the way they line up a kick return? We got to, <laughs> hey, yeah, let's do it. I'm on board, you know. So, right. um, but yeah, whatever they show us on film, um, alignment first, personnel, you know, second. Okay. Thank you. Coach Goff, you got something? Coach, says in terms of special teams philosophy, how aggressive are you? How aggressive are we? Um, we're aggressive. <laughs> um, you know, I think there's nothing more demoralizing than – there's a few things, right? There's nothing more demoralizing than stealing a possession, right? So any time we feel like we can steal a possession, whether it's one of those drill kicks or a pop kick or, or whatever, um, uh, you know, we, we, we try to do that. Like if you can score and then get the ball right back, um, that's, that's just crushing for your opponent. Um, so we're, we're aggressive there. Um, there's the same token, right. Is we all know, like that first play of the game is going to be a kick in some capacity and whether you can get yourself a big return or, or make a big play, a big tackle, a big hit, um, you know, it really can set the tone for the game. Um, you know, we were playing a game a few years ago. Uh, we kicked off to start and, um, we had a kid, real good player, kick coverage. He went down. And um, totally clean. He just he, – he knocked the kid out of the game. Not even the returner, a blocker. Um, he just – he hit him hard, and the kid, you know, he, he no hit injury or anything like that. He just took such a solid shot that he was done for the day. And um, just a huge, huge lift for our team. And we ended up uh, beating a team that we probably shouldn't have beaten um, on that. So – and then in terms of um, being aggressive and trying to make big plays, you know, we are – Especially, I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, I know this was a kickoff thing, but um, our punt return, punt block, again, we call that unit punt block. We don't call it punt return. Um, even if we have a return call, it's just what we do. Um, you know, I know from being on the other end of it, when you get a punt blocked, um, it's probably the worst feeling in the world. So um, we're going to be aggressive with that. We're, we're always going to, we're always trying to block a punt, even if we have, our return on, you know? Um, so we're going to be aggressive there. And we looked at, um, you know, the risk versus reward, um, you know, the national averages with, with punt return yardage. And again, this year we had a kid who was really, really good at it. Um, but in general, um, we felt like if we're, if we just, if we go after most of them and if we fair catch every punt, so be it, you know, we're getting the ball back, we're getting possession and we're taking a chance at, at getting a block. Um, so we're pretty aggressive there. Um, so in that, you know, in that part of it, and then, you know, we do some different things with our kick return and being, you know, whether it's, you know, we've done some reverse type stuff, we've done some throwback type stuff. Um, you know, any chance, a big play in the kick game, I think is a huge momentum swing, you know, and, and I always, I always tell our offensive guys, cause I'm a defensive coach. Like, you know, if you guys mess up at second and 15, but if I mess up at seven, nothing, right. <laughs> so, um, on the flip side of that, when you have the chance to make the big play, um, you know, you, you do it. So I would say we're pretty aggressive. And again, I'm really fortunate to work for a, 
a head coach who has been a special teams coordinator uh, earlier in his career and really likes to – any advantage we can get in the kick game, um, we're going to take it. So when you guys call a, call a block on a, on a punt, is it a, is it a feel thing? Is it a, a field position thing? What goes into that decision to, 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 to make that call? All right. First, I'm going to talk to you about my inner conversation I always have with myself, right? So the first thing is I have an instinct a lot of times when I have a team backed up that it's a good time to go after it. But then I have this, this conversation in my head about, well, it's also a really good deal to just get the ball and have a good field position, right? And, you know, so I, I kind of go through that all the time. Philosophically, I believe when you block punts, you don't beat protection, you don't beat punters, you beat snappers. Um, I am a big believer in that. So I'm going to spend the bulk of my time early in the week, you know, Sunday and Monday, um, looking at their snapper, right? Is he consistent? Is it a rainbow? So on and so forth. I think that's how I, I think I think that's how you block punts personally. Um, you know, because a terrible snap it doesn't matter how good your protection is. A slow snap it doesn't matter how good your your punter's operating time is. Um, so that's the number one thing we're going to attack is is a snapper. And on the flip side of that, right, if you've got a kid who zips it back there and the kid, the, the punter gets it off quick, you, you can have their protection broken down and beat completely. And it doesn't matter. You're not getting there. So, right. um, so we're always going to try to attack snappers. Um, that's a feel thing. The head coach, and I, the head coach is even more aggressive with it than I am, you know, through the headsets. I like, Billy, go after him. Billy, go after him. <laughs> you know, so sometimes I, we do. And, and sometimes we don't, um, you know, a lot of it, you know, and I saw, I've been seeing some Twitter conversations this week, and Coach Half, I know, has been involved in it, Coach Rotsko as well, about, you know, here's the situation, what do you do um, in terms of down and distance, and, and do you punt it, do you put your offense on the field? I feel the same way about year to year, right? This year, our offense broke eight school records. Um, so this year I was a little more willing to say, all right, hey, we'll take the ball. We're, you know, <laughs> just get the ball back in the offense's hands. Um, in years past, if you have an offense that's struggling a little bit, maybe you, you go after more punts to try to give them short field. You know, so that part of it, I think, is feel and, and what you're dealing with. Flow of the game, right? If the, if, the, uh, you know, if the offense is having a good day, just let them, just let them get the ball in their hands. Um, you know, if the defense is, is struggling, maybe you just got to stop. They've been having a tough day. Go out, maybe you go after a punt, you know, to try to keep, you know. So, you know, there's, there's different things week to week that, that play into it. But, um, and even year to year, you know, what kind of team do you have? I firmly believe, and I, again, I know that we're, you know, we started off on kickoff, but I, I like to talk about special teams in general. <laughs> um, I, I firmly believe that the way you block a punt is wanting to block a punt, right? So some years we've got, in my opinion, great schemes. We've got things schemed up. We've got the opponent's protection broken down. And if we don't have kids that, that want to block a punt, have that desire, it doesn't matter. Um, so you, you got to know your personnel too, right? Like everybody else and everything. You got to know your personnel and um, what do we do well? And, and again, I've said it a few times, but this, this year we, we had a kid who was a really dynamic return guy, um, just spectacularly ended up being the division two and three offensive player of the year in New England. Um, he was really, really good. So, hey, just get the ball in his hands, right? Let him, <laughs> let him work. So, um, you know, a lot of things that play a role, but, you know, overall, um, whenever you can, can kind of, you know, stop on somebody that way by, by blocking a punt or whatever, it's, it's crippling, you know, and on the flip side, you know, I know when, if we get a kick block, it's demoralizing. So. Hey coach, while I got you here, what's your, uh, what's your punt scheme? You guys shield or rugby or. We're, a, or? we're, we're a shield punt this year. Um, I was super uh, resistant to going to it. Um, one of the benefits for me is I coach all the special teams units, right? So everybody had gone shield, everybody had gone shield, you know, um, we were facing shield every week. We were, um, you know, a pro style spread for lack of a better term, but a pro style punt, um, traditional. Um, I believed in it. It was good to us. And I felt like when we were going after people's punts, we were getting a lot more pressure, um, 
in our league at the time, we were getting more pressure on shield teams than, than other teams. Um, so I was, I was resistant to it. Um, now the, the drawback for lack of a better term is when we were that traditional punt, the snappers involved in protection, right? Um, so you had to have a kid that could snap and protect. Um, we had that and we were really, really uh, comfortable with it. I mean, we did a pretty good job with it. Um, we knew for the last four years, kid was a senior this year, for the last four years, our best long snapper in terms of snapping the football um, couldn't protect. It just wasn't his thing. I was asking him to do something he couldn't do, um, which is bad coaching. Um, he, he couldn't do it. And because of that, he wasn't our snapper. Um, due to graduation, he was really the one guy we had this year. Um, you know, we had a couple of young kids, but this kid was a senior, really good snapper. Um, combine that with um, we hired a new offensive coordinator who talked to me about the punt they had run at some of his previous schools. Um, and he really sold me on it. We went to it. I liked it. So we went to the Shield this year for the very first time um, and, and had a good year. Um, we, uh, I think it was like week six before we had a yard of punt return uh, yardage against us. Okay. Um, the kid was really good. At, we didn't rugby it, um, but he was really good at directional punting. Um, I'm a big believer in directional punting. Um, you know, and he, in the air, he probably averaged about 30 yards in the air. That's it. But he was so good at getting rolls. Um, and guys, we just weren't giving up any, any return yards. Um, so I was really happy with it, but, uh, you know, it was, it was new for me. So going, for, you know, right now I'm, I'm saying that, that we're going to be a shield punt, um, for the foreseeable future. Um, but who knows? <laughs> There any new Matt guys on here? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Any questions before we let Coach go? All right. Appreciate it, Coach. Thanks no problem, time, man. Way to close down the week. Absolutely. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, again, if, if you have further questions, um, you know, you want to maybe try to get some film or something, uh, feel free to, to reach out to me. It's wrussell one at norwich.edu um, it's all online and stuff but i'd be happy to to talk further answer questions and if i can't get you film i'd be happy to do that sweet we're doing a uh my dog's a barking there we're doing a special teams round table at the end of the month i may try to pull you in whatever you want coach i'm always available all right man awesome appreciate it thanks thanks a lot have a great week